Hello, today I have all this beautiful produce from Thomas Jefferson's garden. Literally, Thomas Jefferson's garden because Monticello, his estate, is having their 10th annual Harvest Heritage Festival on September 10th and they sent me all this produce from the garden. And so today I'm gonna to create a recipe using all this amazing fresh goodness. I've always wanted to have a garden. I love fresh produce. And one of the great things about using garden fresh or farm fresh produce is that you have to use what you've got. It can be a little challenging, but it's always fun and sparks my creativity. So let me show you everything that they sent me. All right, so. First, let's start with our beautiful herbs. Mm. Basil. It smells, everything smells so amazing and fresh. We have here something I've never heard of before, salad burnet. Apparently it tastes like cucumber. Very strange. What else they say? Yeah, this one is lemon balm. Lemon balm, it looks so much like peppermint, but it's very lemony and apparently it's very good for helping with stress reduction, which I need all of that that I can get. So make a tea out of it and like throw it in recipes. Here we have the most weird thing I've ever seen, these peaches. Now these are called white English peaches. They are white. So I haven't tasted it yet, but I'm very excited to. Now this one has a very strange name. It's called Indian blood peach. This one looks more like the sort of peaches that you're used to buying at the farmer's market or at the grocery store. But smells amazing. I'm excited to eat it. For something else very unique and interesting that I've never had before, these are called fish peppers. So fish peppers have this really interesting story of having been originally cultivated um, from two different types of peppers as a hybrid plant by slaves. People use them in all sorts of recipes, but the reason they're called fish peppers is that people, especially black people, who are the main people who are growing and eating this fish pepper, they use them in fish dishes. They have this strange like albinism, so part of the fish pepper is green and then part is white. I'm so excited to use these. I love hot peppers, and apparently these have got a little kick. Okay, okay. I got two bags of potatoes from from Thomas Jefferson's garden. <laughs> Y'all know I love potatoes. I love sweet potatoes, but I like other types of potatoes as well. I do not discriminate. These are purple potatoes. They look so like rustic and they're actually purple on the inside. They're beautiful, I love them. And then here I have some red potatoes. These are like butter colored on the inside and red pinkish on the outside. Wide variety of what they grow there are all heirloom varieties. So there are people there that actually, like they save seeds of heirloom tomatoes and melons and herbs and all sorts of things so that they can continue to grow them today. They sell them on their website. So there's a lot of cool stuff that I'd never seen before. In this bag, we have beautiful fresh figs. These are Marseille figs. They're so beautiful. I'm trying so hard not to eat it right now but I have a whole bag of figs. They're in season. And I have some hickory syrup, which is very, has a very interesting history of having been made by Native Americans. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but here on the back it says, hickory extract is recognized as being used by the Native American Indians for its healing properties. So, I mean, if it worked for them, I don't see why it won't work for me. Now, I had to save this one for last, but y'all, this is some sweet potato butter. Delicious. I haven't opened it yet, but I know it's delicious. It's like a sweet potato sweet preserve jam. So I'm telling you, biscuits, these are gonna be all up on you. <laughs> and they also sent me this book. This has a lot of history about the slaves. You know, the slaves were the ones doing the cooking, obviously. So a lot about them in this book. There are recipes in here. So I was just like flipping through this and learning. I need to read the whole book, but I did get some ideas. So we'll see what we end up preparing in the kitchen. So let's go cook and figure out how we can use all this stuff.
All right, we're back in the kitchen and I have decided to make a creamy chilled potato bisque with panzanella. Have you guys had a panzanella? It's basically a salad with stale bread in it. In really good stale bread, we're using a sourdough polenta bread. And I'm gonna throw the peaches and tomatoes in there and it's in all the herbs, all the herbs. And it's gonna be delicious. First things first, we're gonna start with that chilled potato soup because it needs to have time to chill. So you can make this soup the night before you planned on serving it. That way it has plenty of time to chill, get really cold, and all the flavors can marry and combine. Start by chopping the garlic, onions, and potatoes. You'll want cubes, about a half of an inch thick for the potatoes. Saute the garlic and onions with grapeseed oil in a large pot until they are translucent. Then add the potatoes along with enough water to cover them. I'll put the full recipe on my blog, linked below. Cover and bring the soup to a light boil on high heat. Instead of using cream, we're gonna use white beans, actually butter beans, because I'm from the South, y'all, so we eat butter beans down there. They're super creamy and replace real dairy cream perfectly. Reduce your heat to medium and add a bouillon cube, dried thyme, and a bay leaf. Also add your creamy butter beans and stir. Let it simmer and keep the lid ajar to let the steam escape. So we're gonna cook this potato soup until the potatoes are nice and tender. It only is gonna take us like 25 minutes. In the meantime, you can make the panzanella. Chop and toast sourdough bread until it's crispy. If you have stale sourdough, you probably don't need to toast it, but it's up to you. Chop Roma tomatoes. You want them to be about half of an inch thick. Also, chop your ripe peaches about the same size. Chop up about two tablespoons of onion, then mince your fish peppers. I'm keeping the seeds because that's where all the heat is. They're very spicy, so I'm going to start with just two. And then we can upgrade if we need to. Toss everything into a large mixing bowl. Now we'll add some herbs. This is maybe a good time to mention that you may not be able to find a lot of this unique produce, so make sure you check out my blog and recipe for substitutions. Instead of chopping these herbs with a knife, I'm going to use my hands to rip them. I like doing it like this because they smell heavenly and the fragrance ends up all over my hands. It's like a spa day while you're cooking. Toss all those herbs into the salad and mix them up. Now add the salt, olive oil, pepper, and apple cider vinegar and mix it again. Chop up your toasted bread and add that goodness to the bowl. Toss it until it's all combined. All right, panzanella aside, let's go back to that soup. Puree the soup in two batches until it's silky smooth. I'm going to pour it back into this pot and keep it in the fridge to chill completely. So I decided to make this chilled potato bisque because Thomas Jefferson loved French food so much that he took his slave, James Hemings, to France with him to learn about French cuisine, French cooking. James Hemings was his chef and his slave, and he was also the brother of Sally Hemings, who was Thomas Jefferson's mistress after his wife died. Now his wife happened to be the half-sister of both James and Sally Hemings. That's crazy. So anyway, they love French food, and I thought that this chilled potato bisque would be very fitting to represent both Thomas Jefferson and James Hemings, the chef. Voila! I was going to serve the panzanella on top of the bisque, but decided against it because the panzanella is so damn good on its own. So light and herby. This is so delicious and so fun to make. And it just reminds me how amazing it is to be cooking with ingredients that are fresh from a garden. Everything here is just so full of flavor and delicious. Mmm. So, I hope you'll check out Thomas Jefferson's Monticello. Definitely check out the Harvest Festival on September 10th. Hmm, peaceful. 
peaceful soup. I'm gonna leave a link to the Harvest Festival below this video and there's also a coupon code there. So if you're in the Virginia area, I think you should definitely go. Go look at the photos. It is amazingly beautiful and there's just so much history and the foundation does a really good job at sharing this history with all of us. So check it out. I'll see you next time. Bye! Mmm, 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 so good, so good.